In this video, we will talk about the domain and range of sine and cosine functions. The domain of a function is the set of all possible inputs for this function. In other words, these are all the values that go into a function. The range is the set of all outputs of a function. To understand the domain and range of sine and cosine functions, we will look at the unit circle. This unit circle has a total of 16 angles and each angle has a corresponding point on the unit circle. And we know that the x-coordinate of each point represents the value of cosine at the given angle and the y-coordinate represents the value of sine. So again, each x-coordinate represents the value of cosine and each y-coordinate represents the value of sine. This is valid for all the points around this circle. For example, we can say that cosine of pi over 6 equals square root of 3 over 2. And we write that cosine of pi over 6 equals square root of 3 over 2. Here, pi over 6 represents the input and square root of 3 over 2 represents the output of this function. Now, sine of pi over 6 is equal to 1 half. And we will write that sine of pi over 6 equals 1 half. So again, here pi over 6 is the input and 1 half is the output. Now, pi over 6 is just one value from the domain of sine and cosine functions. But let's see what other values these two functions can take. This unit circle has a total of 16 angles, but we can draw any other angles too, and each angle will have a corresponding point on the unit circle. For example, we can draw any angle between 60 and 90 degrees, and this angle will have a corresponding point on the unit circle that will have the coordinates x and y. And here recall that if we move counterclockwise, we generate positive angles, and if we move clockwise, we generate negative angles. So if each angle has a corresponding point on the unit circle, this means that for any angle, we will have a value for sine and cosine. So then, we can say that the input for sine and cosine functions can be any real number from negative infinity to positive infinity. Then we will use interval notation to write that the domain is any number from negative infinity to positive infinity. And this means that we can use any real number as the input for sine or cosine functions and we will always get a value. Now, let's talk about the range of these functions. The range is the set of all outputs of a function. First, let's take a look at the values of the sine function to see how they change as the angle increases. I will write the coordinates of these points in decimal form. Here, square root of 3 over 2 is approximately 0 0.87 and 1 half is 0 0.5. All this will help us better visualize how the values of sine and cosine change. So let's take a look at the values of sine. Here at 0, the value of sine is 0. Then as the angle increases, the value of sine is 0 0.5, then 0 0.71, then 0 0.87, and at pi over 2, the value of sine is 1. So again, from 0 to pi over 2, the value of sine increases from 0 to 1. Now, in quadrant 2, we see that the values of sine decrease back to 0. And in quadrant 3, the values of sine become negative and they change from 0 to negative 1. So, at 3 pi over 2, the value of sine is the lowest and that is negative 1. And now, in quadrant 4, the values of sine change from negative 1 to zero. So what we see from here is that the smallest value that the sine function takes is negative one and the largest value is positive one. So then we can write that the range of the sine function is any number from negative one to positive one. And these brackets show that negative one and positive one are included. 
Now let's take a look at the values of cosine. At zero, the value of cosine is one, and as the angle increases, the values of cosine decrease. At pi over two, the value of cosine is zero. So from zero to pi over two, the values of cosine decrease from one to zero. In quadrant two, the values of cosine are negative and they change from zero to negative one. Then in quadrant three, they change from negative one to zero. And in quadrant four, the values of cosine change from zero to positive one. So notice that just like with sine, the smallest value that cosine takes is negative one and the largest value is positive one. So the range of the cosine function is also any number from negative one to positive one. So then we can say that the domain of both sine and cosine functions is any number from negative infinity to positive infinity and the range is any number from negative one to positive one. And you can use the calculator just to see how all these values work. For example, let's say we want to evaluate sine of just any number between negative infinity and positive infinity. For example, let's say we want to evaluate sine of negative 475. When you use your calculator, make sure you have your calculator in radian mode. Then the value of this function has to be a number from negative one to positive one. In this case, when we use the calculator, we see that sine of negative 475 is approximately 0 0.58, which is a number between negative one and positive one. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, leave a comment, and thank you for watching.